Brian Stewart, Mike King, and Bill Honan. Uh, one, two, three, and four. You guys know how to do that. We're going uh, northbound, right echelon. We have, uh, right now we have Liberty High School drill team is doing a demo. Snook's out there for the next half hour. The drill team is also going to present the colors while the colors are being brought down by the jumper, so it's kind of a dual thing. Uh, so we will have the flag uh, coming in without a problem should you decide that it's not uh, good to jump, all right? You guys make that decision. But we will send them up. It will then be two balloons. Uh, flower bomb will be Dave Brown. The uh, ribbon cut will be Mike King. Wing walk, super acro, Scott Francis. Uh, Fifi pickup, Kevin Pierce. And then it will be Charlie with the Country Club Cup. Now, Charlie will do his act. He will taxi up, get out like he normally does. Our crew that, uh, that takes care of the airplane, go ahead and bring it over here, and then uh, there will be some, some uh, acknowledgement for Charlie at that point. And it will take a few minutes to do that, but then we will send the final formation up to do their, their thing, and uh, at that time we'll have Charlie come back over here to get your cup. Mike, right here. you're going to lead the final formation, mm -hmm. so you're going to go to the left, and the Three other formation guys are going to go with Mike, looking eyes left. Dave, you're going to be coming from this position, and you're going to leave a slot for Charlie. So when you taxi out, you don't come over to the number four guy. You leave an opening, and everybody else that lines up is going to be lining up on Dave. On my right side. On your right side. So we've got this opening. We're going to taxi up. We've got the opening, and after everybody's up, Charlie's going to come in, and you're going to fill that opening, Charlie, and be right in the center. All right? Yeah. Huh? You think I can handle it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually betting against you, but I don't know. <laughs> the odds are not good. So, so that's that's how we're going to uh, to end with uh, Charlie in the center, and uh, I think it's going to be a great day and a great honor for Charlie here. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever, how many of us can tell you T.O.P. radio? Then you know the voice you're about to hear, the good friend Ron Davis. Give him a big hand. Charles! Great ladies and gentlemen. A real hero out here, huh? Once upon a time. Once upon a time, under the old hackberry tree. The oldest hackberry tree in the state of Virginia and the tallest. It's a tribute to you, Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you're all having a wonderful time today. Let me know if you are. Are you having a good time? Isn't this a beautiful day? Well, listen, we've got more formation flying for you today. I should get that guy down out of the, out of the sky. We've got lots more action, but right now we're just going to take a little break. So smoke them if you got them. We're going to, we're going to stop the show for a minute. We're just going to give an old timer an airplane ride. Uh, he's, uh, his name is Silas Hicks. Silas Hicks has been kind of a guy that's helped us out around here for a long time, and he never wanted to get paid for his work. He just said all he wanted to do was get an airplane ride. And so we said that, well, it's the last show of the season, and we thought it would be appropriate to just take five minutes of your time to let him go for an airplane ride in an old J3 Piper Cub. Is that okay with y'all? 
We'll give him a little airplane ride. We'll have a pilot out here in a minute. I think we're going to start up. There's the airplane with the engines ticking over right now. That's a beautiful J3 Piper top. It's just about as old as I am, and I'm as old as the hills. So the airplane can't do much, but it can take off and you can fly around and so we will buzz you around over the trees for five minutes and then we'll have more formation flying and aerobatics and all kinds of wonderful things taking place. And uh, I see that we've got Silas over here. Silas lives right down the back road. Uh, that's why you probably never see him around, but uh, let me just come over and shake his hand. Hello, Silas. I know that this is a day you look forward to for a long, long time. You got any words for us? No words at all. You're speechless. Well, Silas, there's the J3 Pub that you've wanted to ride in for so long. We're going to get you a little ride, take you up, fly around. People are going to grab a hamburger or a Coke or whatever, just sit tight and talk to each other. And once we get you back down on the ground, the air show will continue. So we want you to have a wonderful time. Okay? This is your moment. You know that you have earned it. I mean, you put in many, many, many hours here to find uh, the airplanes and airplanes. Who's, uh, who's flying today? Who's in that aircraft? That's Mark Medicine in the airplane. Mark is the very Very famous pilot named Bill Menifee, a United captain, and a wonderful old friend who left before his time, once upon a time, long ago. Well, this is an old airplane. It's a rivet. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. Don't do that. Hey. This is it's delicate. It's old. It's you know, but I mean it's old. But I mean, what can I say? Like it's got dimples in it. Now, if you'll just walk around the airplane here, Silas. Come on over this way, okay? Watch the rudder, and uh, we'll. Silas, what are you doing? Come on, Silas. So great. Get off that airplane. Come on, Silas. You can't do that. Get off that airplane. Yeah, he thinks it's a mule, yeah. You're just catting around. Has he been drinking? Has he been, you haven't been drinking, have you? No? No? Now look, get in the airplane, we're going to take you out. Five minutes is all we ask. This guy's, he thinks he's the clown act. He thinks he's having fun here today. Well, we'll get him up and around. And uh, as soon as we do, then we'll get the show on again. Okay. Mark's going to taxi, not Mark's going to wait a minute. Oh, 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 stop it. Tell Mark to stop. That tail wheel doesn't look right. Hold it. I don't know whether he hurt something or not. Mark! Mark, 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 Mark. Hang on just a minute. Hang on. Hang on. I think we got a problem back here. We're going to take a look at it. It looks to me like the tail wheel might be bent or broken. Do you want to taxi this a little bit? Let's see how it goes. I'll walk along with you. Mark is still wobbling. Mark is wobbling. Mark! Hold it, hold it, hold it. Tell him to stop. Mark, one thing we got there, a lot of our planes there. I'm here, we can do this after the but sure. This guy Silas won't mind. He won't mind. No, 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 the tail wheel, look. It's obviously broken. Look at it, it's wobbling all over the place. What are, what are you doing out of the airplane? What are you doing out of the airplane? Hey! I thought he was going to crash on takeoff there. Hey, what? What? You're clueless. I mean, what's the deal? Can, there's no problem with that airplane. Only Silas Hicks. What is? Is the radio on? He can't fly. He's got a receiver. He might. He's got a radio on or something. He's got a receiver. He might radio or something. Hey, Tyler, can you switch us to this? We'll see if we can't talk to you about. What do you suggest we do? Get your, uh, please get your airplane back. You're never supposed to. Oh my gosh, pull back! Oh. Now, listen, Silas, if you can hear me, we're going to try to get you back down on the ground and then we'll continue with the show. Back to the left and back to the right. And if you push the rudder as you're doing now, well, you're going to turn to the left, but you can't do a flat turn in an airplane like that. That's good. Ease in a little stick. When you push a little rudder, push a little stick. Ease the stick around to the left. Now, you're getting a little slow. You're getting a little slow. 
Okay, look, Silas, we want you to the airplane around. Very gently, we want you to land back into the wind. Hear me, and you can see the direction in which the flags are... No, 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 Silas, now he's crossing it up. Silas, you're going to fall down. <laughs> now, Silas, listen. What we to do is ease the airplane back around. I want you to get a feel for the sticks, get a feel for the rudders. If you pull back on the stick, the airplane's nose will go up, and the airplane will slow. If you, there you go with another one of those flat turns. No, no, no. That's okay. Silas, look down the runway. No jigging job. No, no, no. Don't kick the rudder panels like that, Silas. You're going to have a big problem with that air. No, Silas. Oh, look. He's, he, you got it. He's got a wheel down. Silas. Don't push forward on the throttle. Not the throttle. No, you were almost back home. Oh my gosh. Boys and girls, what are we going to do with this man? He's back up in the sky again and he can't fly the airplane. Heavens to Murgatroyd. All right, now listen, Silas. I'm not fooling around. You apparently know more than we think you know, but I don't know if you know enough about landing the airplane to get by with it and putting it on the ground in one piece. So I want you to just, that's good, feel it out, climb for a little altitude, get comfortable and that'll be the way we want it to happen. Now, you're pushing in right rudder and you're bringing, wait a minute, are you bringing your left stick or right stick? That's good. Ease it in now, rudder and stick together to the right. Watch the nose, you don't want to pull back on the stick too much. You don't want to climb too much and you don't want to get too slow. If you get too slow, the airplane will stall and it will dive toward the ground and you will crash and it will be the end of the whole day for you. You don't love that. Where is he going? He's going. How come I'm talking like Baron Von Anger? He's leaving. Now, what we want you to do, just good, good, feel it out. Feel it out nice and easy. I hope you can hear everything that I'm saying. That's good. A nice coordinated turn to the left. That's good. A little bit of rudder. Left pedal on that little foot pedal over there. A little bit of stick. You're climbing at a radical angle. I don't want you to climb like that. I want you to no! Silas. No, you pull back on the throttle. You've got to kick the opposite rudder. Neutralize the stick. Pull back on the stick. No, Silas, you're diving now. Ease it back. Ease it back. Pull it back. Not to have fall back, Silas. You can't fly it sideways either, so don't do that, please. Oh. Now, Silas, enough of this fooling around. We're going to get you back down on the ground and we're going to have a nice little talk. Hey, maybe I can induce you down. How does the word pull pull you behind yourself? Something like that, eh? Can we lure you back? Look at the way the flags are blowing. You can see which way the wind is. Okay, you're lining up with you're lining up with the runway over there by the trees. You're going to get some dustiness coming across the trees. But if you line it up, no, 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 not a sachet. Easy, guys. Now you're pushing left rudder, right rudder, left rudder, right rudder. You're strutting along like a bluesy on Friday afternoon in Philadelphia. No, 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 no. Nice and easy, does it? Just ease it around. We're going to get you. We want you to. We want you to land in the direction opposite the flags. You see how the flags are blowing? If you look down over here, you'll see the flags. They're all blowing on a diagonal to the runway you were just flying over. So we'd like to line you up with the flags and have you come in on what we call our little crosswind runway right over here. So you're going to have the white tent on your left and you're going to be looking at the tree. Okay? No, 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 you're, you're kind of skidding me. That's it. You want, you want to get it around to the right. Good, good, good. No, 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 no. You're over controlling the airplane. You're pushing too much rudder, rudder, rudder. You don't want to push rudder, rudder, rudder. Easy does it. Easy does it. Watch the tent. I said beside the tent, not over the tent. Now, easy to run. Kick a little left. A little left rudder. A little left rudder. You got a wheel down. Get another wheel down. Get another wheel down. You got two wheels down. Get the tail wheel down. There it is. Get that tail wheel down. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, this of course
is a man who's famous all over the country, noted as one of the last of the great barnstormers, if not the last barnstormer, a man who's flown everywhere in that J3 Cup. His real name is Charlie Culp. He uses the name Silas Six because that's who he borrowed these coveralls from 35 years ago when you start. And ladies and gentlemen, he is a legend, appreciated by everyone. There's a wonderful crowd out here today. World War II aces, new lieutenant pilots from the Marine Corps. The FAA is here to honor you. That's right. The same. They, they promised me they were honoring him, not taking his license. Good. So ladies and gentlemen, let's hear a nice round of applause for the one and only flying farmer. Charlie reminds me that there are many members of the Virginia Aviation Hall of Fame who come here from all over the state to see this wonderful man who is, by the way, a member of that very, very select group of people. Charlie Cup, ladies and gentlemen. Charlie Cup. And Ron, we also have, as our aircraft is starting up for the final formation, we have Lorando Lavis from the FAA. I'd like to uh, present you with a certificate. Citation. Charlie, for many years you've proven your devotion to aviation safety as a commercial pilot, flight and ground instructor, and effort and power of the country. Your aviation experience and knowledge has been a valuable asset to the aviation community. This good friend award highlights the important contribution you have played in enhancing and promoting aviation education and flight safety. As a manager of the AV of the Washington Flight Center District Office, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize your lifetime accomplishment as a recipient of the Small Stable Award and as a master technician and master power. I would like to thank you for your service and dedication to aviation safety and support to the Flight Center. Thank you. And also from the Virginia uh, State Aviation Commission, uh, Randy Burnett is also here with a presentation for Charlie. Charlie don't need no sneaking presentation. Everybody knows Charlie. <laughs> Charlie from the Department of Aviation, we'd like to say thank you for your many, many years of flying circus. We got a little thing for you here. Prevented the flying, Charlie, the flying farmer called for his more than 60 years of dedication to aviation, the Commonwealth, and his extraordinary support for numerous Air Force events. Virginia Department of Aviation, Richmond, Virginia, October 28, 2007. Virginia is the flying level. Charlie, thank you all for coming here, so. unique airplane, the uh, Warner Sportster, a uh, little red low-wing airplane, it's uh, quite unique, down here at the end of the line. <laughs> Thank you. 
Many pleasant memories. And you're there. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I'm gonna give one to John. Uh, John. I don't know. I don't know where he is. He's out. He's out. How did you make this cookie? Yeah. All right, just sign your name. All right.
Find a table wherever you're going to sit. Uh, our plan is is to have uh, we have the meal coming out. Uh, we have seating. We have seating for about 200 people in here, but I think we only plan for about 150 meals, so we're going to have to stretch it. Uh, we did have plenty of uh, hors d'oeuvres and things that were here uh, beforehand, so hopefully uh, some of you are full on them. <laughs> uh, but what we're going to do is, if everybody can find a table. Uh, then we're going to orderly point to a table and have a table go up at a time. Well, folks, we want to uh, to uh, welcome you, those of you that weren't in the briefing today. Uh, we had a full house there, too, and uh, had a great briefing. Had a lot of fun in there, and we were able to recognize uh, uh, members that had uh, been in the original Flying Circus that founded the place. We still have about four or five of those that are, are with us and, uh, and still kicking around and keeping us on our toes. And we had a lot of members that, uh, like yourselves that came back that uh, served here in, in years past. And then, of course, we have our own folks that, uh, that are continuing to keep the flying circus going. So we had a good time. But the thing we forgot to do, and it was entirely my fault, but the one thing we do here at the Flying Circus, and we've done since John Frizzell got started with us many, many years ago, Reverend John Frizzell, um, was we always started the season with a prayer, and we ended the season with a prayer. And uh, it's, it's done us good. 
and uh, we've had some accidents out here, unfortunately, and uh, we have not seriously hurt anybody. So we, we want to continue that tradition, and we also want to take a moment. So we're going to say a quick prayer, not only for our safe season, great season that we've had, but also for the food that we've been blessed with today. So if you bow your heads with me tonight. Lord, we do thank you for being with us this entire year. We've had uh, a lot of fun. We've, uh, we've, I think we've pleased a lot of people. We've put a lot of smiles on a lot of people's folks. We thank you for the opportunity to do that, the opportunity to come out here and, and share our love of aviation with the rest of the world. We ask you uh, to be continue to be with us as we go through the off-season. We look forward to another year next year, a great year. And we now thank you for this food we're about to eat. And thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Tim and Dave have put together a, a, an evening for us, so please try to cooperate with them. We'll get through this food real quick, and then they have a, a lot of a, a little bit of a program to go through. So if we'll all cooperate, we'll uh, we'll all have a great time. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Tim. Uh, this dash right here is from the first airplane that Charlie ever owned, the very first original airplane, so called, uh, Aronica C3, and I haven't come across it. Is that, isn't that what it was? Yeah, I came across it about a year ago, and so I, this is the first airplane that Charlie Carp ever bought. This is the dash panel from it. He, he autographed it up here on the side. It's kind of hard to see, but it's still on there. And uh, so I just wanted him to see it, and uh, then I made this little item for you. You want to take a say, Charlie? Oh, wow. And uh, I'll tell you about that when he takes it out. Squirrel, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, what it is, the the wood is some from the wing spars and uh, different things, and it's little turnbuckles and just it's actual parts of the plane. So it's kind of neat. I appreciate it. Been on you this, this short while, and I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. We're going to do a small little presentation here for Charlie. You speak of Charlie, have some good times, and uh, we want to thank uh, many, many people for helping us. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, Captain Don would like to say something. You know, it's age, age before beauty, so get up here, Charlie. And I know I'm not too pretty, but I got some things to say to you. And one of them is that, that, that I love you. Oh. And, and, and not off, okay? That's what she said. I have a couple little pictures I had around the house. And, uh, one of them is Charlie with the monks. And it's not the chipmunks. These are real monks. Remember that? That was down in Carolina. That's yours. And, uh, and, and it says to Charlie, amongst friends. Hey, you, you get it? You get it? And then, uh, this is a flying boat that goes to Charlie. Don't mean much. Captain Don Charlie. What is new tools? These are, these are these ratchet tools that you cannot get on backwards. Hey, Don, you won't believe this, but there's nothing wrong with my tool. <laughs> And I want you to clean up your shop. It's just a mess. <laughs> Miss, Miss Diane and hey, baby, buddy, baby you, Isabel. You put him up to that. I did, yeah. I did. And I'll tell you, Charlie, how lucky are we to have so many good friends here. I don't know how else to say it, but this is a beautiful... 
This is where all the beautiful people are tonight. Another thing that I would like to say is that uh, Charlie, I've, I've been very fortunate to go on the road with Charlie, Dave, and I, Mark, and I. We've gone uh, down to the Carolinas, Georgia, uh, Florida, all the way up as uh, north uh, with Charlie to um, Geneseo, New York. And was very fortunate that for the past three years, uh, Big Mike and Jeff that are here to my right have uh, been very helpful uh, when we get there and everything is taken care of. They have, uh, they are part of the 1941 Historic Air Group. They are also a nonprofit organization and they have been uh, helping us uh, yesterday and most of today or all of today helping us with everything to get uh, squared away. Uh, for our show and our presentation have been very quiet about saying anything and I wouldn't be saying anything right now but uh, Big Mike uh, wants to present some things to Charlie from uh, the 1941 Historic Air Group. I'm not very good at this so good, Mike. Oh, stop. <laughs> I'm not very good at this so bear with me. I don't like crowds. Um, I know in your shop you collect posters from every air show that you've gone to. And I don't believe that you got any of the posters from our air show last year. We want to make sure that these get hung up onto your on your wall. And we have one from our newest one. It's called the Biplane Rally. It's called the old Aerodrome Days. And there's a standing invitation for anyone down here that brought their bi biplane today. I will send the date and everything to uh, Tim. You all are invited to come up to this biplane rally. We'd love to have these planes up there. You want to look at them the gateway? Yeah, I kind of recognize that. <laughs> well, so we've got a program for you, which you are in. And uh, en enjoy that. Use it however you want to. <laughs> got, no, not unless you want to. It's always open. We got you a different hat. You can wear that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> and you can change your shirt. <laughs> and we've got a pin, doesn't go in your ear or anything. Put it right here. Just so you don't lose keys to your phone. That's for you. Like, and I want to thank you for coming up for three years. We've enjoyed you immensely up there. You've entertained that crowd and they loved it and they've always wanted to make sure that you're coming back. So now I got to tell them that you're not coming back. But you can come up and watch the air show. I want to thank Chuck for uh, for helping us get this award together. And what this says, Charlie, this is uh, on behalf of the Flying Circus, all the, all the members of the Flying Circus, present and past. And it says, to Charlie Culp, the Flying Farmer, from your friends and family of the Flying Circus, in recognition of 37 outstanding years of flying excellence. 37 years out here at the Flying Circus, Charlie. Me and I've uh, here, suffered to uh, friendship with Charlie for quite a few years. And I just have a few questions that I'd like to ask everybody in the room, maybe rhetorical, don't necessarily have to answer them, or maybe with just a show of hands. How many in the room have known Charlie for five years? Raise your hand. How about 10 years? 15 years? 20 years? 25 years? 30, 35, 50 years, am I the only one with my hands up, 54 years, I've no doubt that, 
<laughs> How many of you, seriously, have been totally impressed by Charlie's dedication to aviation? Yeah. Yeah. To, to its history, to flying safety, to the romance of aviation. How many of you have learned more than you ever thought possible just by being near Charlie Cole? How many of you here have been touched by the warmth, the humanity, the humility, not to mention the skill and the ability of this man? I wouldn't have written that if I'd known you were going to read it. <laughs> gave me away. How many of you have been absolutely impressed with the manner in which Charlie has flown, not only that Cub, but all the other airplanes that you saw in the Flying Circus over these past years? How many of you realize that Charlie is one of the very few air show pilots in the world who flies on the absolute ragged edge during his whole routine? Amen. I could go on. How many of you hoped that at the end of your professional flying career, you will have made such an impact and will have touched so many lives as this man? How many of you, of us, I shall, the bill's in the mail, how many of you can only dream that at the end of your professional career you will receive the adulation of such an air show performer as, say, Delmar Benjamin, who called me on the phone and asked me to convey his... No, I'm not kidding. And Bert Brooks, who's now in a, in a nursing home and is thinking of Charlie on this day. How many of you are going to feel that the air show world has just become a wee bit smaller and a wee bit less exciting without this marvelous aviator? Amen. Amen. How many of you are hoping beyond all hope that even though he won't be flying for us, he'll stay around a long, long time and give us all the counsel and advice we've taken from him over these past many, many, many oh, yeah. years. Oh, yeah. How many of you in this room can put your arms around Charlie Culp and say, I love you, Charlie? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Best borough, old pal. So everybody knows that you didn't write this one. I don't have any papers prepared. I, I have to get out of here a little soon because uh, my boy's got to get bit back to school tomorrow. And I just wanted to tell <laughs> you, you don't know who's just blessed you, boy. <laughs> Mark's always very interesting. Mark Menifee, his grandfather, uh, was here for years and Mark uh, uh, grew up and, and became an adult and he came out to the flying circus just oh he grew up he turned 21 how's that one? so he uh, came here to see what the circuit was what the circus was and he said well who are you he says i'm mark menifee i said you have a relation to bill menifee and he goes yeah it's my grandfather I went okay come on in i don't know i don't know what to say there's so many stories i could tell <laughs> Charlie story, you're proposed to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There's so many stories that you could tell. Everybody's got one. No, he is not. My dad's not here. <laughs> I I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what to say. Every story, every story that I have is something that I'll. Uh, I, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be able to tell. 
the time I spent on the road with Charlie and um, every second that I spent with him here, um, this, uh, the experiences that I've had with him, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take with me for the rest of my life. And I know that everybody else has one. And, um, you know, if that doesn't say enough about him, then I don't know what else does. I, you know, I can't pick one out. There's so many, right? Um, so give me some applause. <laughs> I love Charlie. He's the best. He is the best. Going on the road with him, if you've never done it, um, I know I, 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 I did it on my own and then I did it with Tim and it's just one of the greatest experiences that you could ever have and um, I don't know, I'll remember it for the rest of my life. And uh, But uh, you know, it's not over. We're going to have uh, tons of more memories to make, right? <laughs> Starting next year, the first show. And Charlie's gonna fly it, right? <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Oh, and a a after after he came down, every, every act that I ever did with him, I would I would tell him that he's the best. I would say, "You're the best, Charlie." And so, I, I'll say it again, Charlie, you're the best. <laughs> There's not a lot left to say about this guy. Um, I came here when I was 21 years old, and yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, you know, this place when it first started was uh, designed around World War One airplanes, and uh, we got in. My dad and I got in back to the, about the first year of its organization, and uh, the way it ran was each plane had an assigned pilot, and uh, and so we were ground crew. I knew that as 21 years old, I wasn't going to get to fly an airplane. So it really wasn't, it was a lot of fun to be around airplanes and be involved in it, but man, I just had this hankering to be able to fly an airplane, but it was still being part of the flying circus. There were some pilots that, and of course I was a brand new second officer with United Airlines, and so I was lowest of the low, I didn't have, <laughs> so, you know what I was, and, uh, but the thing, you missed him. Try again, Charlie. <laughs> the thing that, that caught me, that really did the most for me, was the fact that Charlie, you know, was a friend from the time I got out here. He was, he was, you know, treated me as a, uh, as a fellow pilot. Um, just treated me very well as a, as a youngster amongst a whole bunch of real experienced pilots. So I appreciate the friendship and fellowship that we've had with this guy. Play harmonica with him. He teaches me, and we, I try and hang in there as best I can. But over the last, what, three, five, six years, uh, you know, I've kind of been around. Charlie's had his ups and downs and, and uh, good times and bad times, and I just really appreciate being part of Charlie's life. And I, I think the, the thing we need to recognize is Charlie, you know, had a terrible time with the FAA last year with his medical and uh, kind of has made this decision that he wants to go out on his terms. He doesn't want the FAA telling him he can't fly or anything else. So he's, he's working that, that decision and, uh, and going to see what next year brings. But uh, he made this, no, as far as, as far as flying, if he goes and gets a medical and fails a medical, he then, can't, and he, then he can't fly. So now he's got to have this decision. Does he want to just get the LSA uh, light sport pilot license? So it's a, something that, you know, particularly with the hassle that the FAA gave him, you know, he, he's going to seriously look at that. But I think if you recognize it, Charlie has the best of most of everything. Normally, we would be sitting around at a wake or a funeral talking about good old Charlie and these stories then would come out. He gets to stand here, and, and this is the best thing that can happen to a person, really, is to recognize when he's alive how much people love him and, and, and have joined being a part of his life. So, uh, uh, you know... Greatest guy. <laughs> and if you, rec 
recognize that. You look at all the accolades that Charlie's gotten and a little bit of cash and some plaques and posters and everything. And with all that in mind, I'd like to tell you, next year will be my last year and I'll be retiring. <laughs> and, uh, Charlie. Hey, hey. This is one great guy. This guy. It, nobody here was in Paula briefing. This, is, <coughs> this guy has been Mr. Flying Circus for a, a long time. That's all right. Uh, and yeah, I appreciate it. Huh? Yeah. I went on the road with uh, Charlie once alone. Wasn't supposed to be alone. I don't remember. <laughs> it was October of 2005, Peachtree Falcon Field in the great state of Georgia. I don't remember. I do. <laughs> And Charlie was like a babe magnet. I felt like I was with a rock star when I, we walked around the crowd. And these two elderly ladies came up to Charlie. And they said, Charlie, these young boys, they faster than you, but ain't none as good as you. Bayfields, you win. That's the best. Uh, he bought the place. But Dave's correct. You, you, you go on the, foot, on the road with Charlie and anywhere you go, uh, College Park uh, 99, we're over there, we're a two-day show, and we finish um, the first day, Saturday, and there's a function, and then uh, overnight in the Sunday show. So after... Um, the first, his first day, we go out in the crowd and everything, and there's everybody coming up to me or come up to him and say, is that the guy? And it doesn't matter, three pea suits or Harley guys, I've seen it, I've seen it all. And then seeing uh, Charlie in most of the, the places that you see these, the biggest and the fastest coming to him saying you're the best, Rob Holland of one that we spoke to of a Geneseo, the best. He said, Tim, can you, can I get a picture with Charlie? <laughs> I mean, these are some of the big names. Can, can I get a picture with Charlie? Ask him, I don't know. Go home, no, it is fair. <laughs> I, I've been coming out to the circus since I was, what, four years old, four or five years old. I basically grew up out here and not quite too. And uh, I, I, I have admired this old fart for I can't tell you how long now. I mean, the, the way he flies his Piper Cub, it, it truly defies the laws of physics. I, I don't know how he gets the Cub to do what he does. Watch your language, I'm here. <laughs> okay, he is in the room, that's correct. Okay, real quick, my favorite Charlie Culp quote. I swear, I swear he said this, this is a true story. About 10 years ago, in, in a moment of weakness, I asked Charlie a serious question. And I said, Charlie, how often do you practice your act? I mean, I know you fly it every week, but I mean, do you ever go out and practice? And he goes, practice? Are you crazy? And ruin my act? <laughs> True story. Bring him up here. Charlie lets everybody taxi his cub out for him. He's not very... Selective. Selective. Yeah, that's a good word. I'm out there one day and Charlie says, Hey kid, taxi my cub out for me. So I do. We fire it up. I bring it up and I taxi it around. Charlie gets in. Of course, I get out. He goes and does his act. I get back in the airplane after he does his act. I taxi it around the hangar. And I go to reach up to the mag switch to shut it off. He flew the whole act on the left mag. I forgot to put it on both. That was you. So. Being an honest person, I go to Charlie. I say, Charlie, did it seem like your cub didn't have the power that it should? He goes, why, what'd you do? 
and I commenced to explain what I did not do. And he cussed me out. <laughs> I cussed everybody out. I don't think I've acted God very much since then. <laughs> when we got to Eng when we be first of, before we met the Duchess, before we got, when we just got there, we just checked into the aerodrome show where they're going to have the air the airport the air show. I said, I said to Victor Norman, who was running the damn, Victor Norman, that's a good name, he was running the show. I said, where are we going to stay? He says, at the pub in Lockington. The pub in Lockington. You can't, I couldn't believe it. This is all true. And, we, and, and so we went to the pub, this chilling me now, you know. And then, by the way, they loaned us, they loaned us a Range Rover. It was a Range Rover. Ooh. Well, that's another part of the story. We'll tell that later. And we went. Oh, there they loaned us a Range Rover, and of course the steering wheels on the wrong side of the damn thing. <laughs> I know, and so I, that's when I told Charlie, "You tell me to keep left whenever." So anyway, we drove down to the pub in Luckington, which was only uh, three miles. Everything's three miles over there, and we, uh, I, we walked into the bar. And the bar was open. It was about noonish, I think. I said, "Where are we going to stay?" And the barmaid, good looking, of course. Did you ever see one that wasn't? And she says, she's going to stay in the back room. So Charlie and I went to the back, remember that? The back room. The back room of the pub. Well, I listened. I knew that we had died and gone to heaven, for God's sakes. Here we are staying in a pub in England, and the prices are about, you know, nickel dime compared to what all the big money we made. And so, anyway, so I asked her, I said, when is breakfast? She said, anytime you want it. You remember that? <laughs> Anytime you want it. This is better than home, I swear to God. <laughs> well, I know that's enough Duchess stories and stuff. But th listen, I went to Charlie with. Uh, no, I went to you. Tell them about the traffic jam. Oh, yeah, okay. The traffic jam. Well, there was a traffic jam in Lockington. I know you can you find it hard to believe. I, I got up first one morning. Charlie slept in, you know, you know how that goes. We had a big night. We, we, lived, we lived in a pub, for God's sakes. And so Charlie stayed up a little later than I did. So I got up, I got up first, I got up first the next morning. And I went down to the breakfast, you know, and the barmaid made my breakfast. When Charlie got there, I said, you missed the traffic jam. He said, what was that? I said it was a boy on a bicycle and a girl on a horse. <laughs> and this, these are all true stories, for God's sake. And listen, Charlie, I'm glad that I'm glad I went with you to, to entertain the crown heads of Europe. <laughs> Bo and Arlene's daughter, Bowerly. Uh, she wanted to be here uh, and couldn't, and she asked us to read this little email to you. And she said this was an ode to Charlie. And she said growing up, and she would have told you this, she said, if she'd have been here herself. Growing up at the Flying Circus was an awesome experience. One of my earliest FCA memories is of Charlie, of course. Bo my, and my mom would come down and we'd stay over on weekends in Bo's camper. And Charlie was always there, and the hangar became my second home, and Charlie was part of that home. He's special not only because of his beard, but because he had a Piper Cub. And everyone knows if you have one of those, you're the shit. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> to this day, I still want to replicate the Flying Farmer's Loop just like he did, but I don't think Bo would appreciate that. <laughs> Charlie has been a constant at the circus, and whenever he wasn't there for the show, it felt like something was missing. His act was always wonderful to watch. And even though I haven't been there for years, I know when I come back, it will not be the same. Charlie and the Flying Farmer will be missed. I love you, Charlie. Thanks for being there while I grew up. And thanks for all the amazing acts, Valerie. That's nice. I will say that I have such a great time looking out across this room and seeing so many people um, that have, have always been circus family. It's not like you used to be circus family, you're always circus family. And one of the most inter interesting days of yesterday was that um, we had planned, several people were coming into town and Charlie was putting the cub together. 
So somebody would come into town, come to the circus, and Charlie was working on the airplane. I would just quietly tell him to go up to Charlie and uh, ask him if he needed help. I saw his head jerk around about 20 times yesterday. And if nobody has met the most interesting one here, and he's going to kill me later, but if you've ever heard of Bill Hall, he is here. And uh, Bill, it, it's a, it was one of those things that don't do a Bill Hall, but no, Bill, we really do love you. You have always been a constant, and we appreciate you being here. Jerry Ryder, thank you very much. Nora Moore. If you touched my airplane, I wouldn't have flown. <laughs> I mean, everybody's coming from out of town. Rich Eliason came from Colorado. Ted Whitcomb came with his family from Florida. Uh, Jerry from South Carolina. Bill from Maryland. And I, I couldn't even get everybody in on this one. But um, I got a call early Friday morning. And uh, the person asked me to say something to Charlie. And she asked me to say what I would like to say. And I said, Marty, I wouldn't have a problem saying anything to Charlie, but thank you, she loves you, and bless you very much, Marty Gopper. And she said, give him a kiss for him. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn, I need another beer. And we are finally going to have the infamous Bill Hall. I met Charlie in a very interesting way. I bought a Stearman without knowledge of the Flying Circus Aerodrome, right up here in Manassas. And I was told that there was an elderly gentleman to the south that was excellent with rag wings. And I flew down here towards the end of the summer. Charlie looked at my plane and said, I can get to it towards the end of November. Well, it was the 1st of December before we got into it, and we had the plane finished somewhere about the middle of February. It was one of the most brutal winters that Virginia had seen in many years. And I had made a deal with Charlie that he would cut me some slack on the price of the restoration and the refabricating and covering of the plane if I would help. Well, as it turned out, I was down here about Oh, three, four days at a stretch, almost any given week. And Charlie and I got to know each other real well. And I learned about the Flying Circus. And I learned a lot that I didn't even know at the time. I learned things during that winter that I have carried all through my life. And I've never forgotten. And I'm sorry to say, that I didn't truly appreciate what I learned from Charlie until much later in my life. But appreciate I do. And I'd like to tell one more short story. Well, that wasn't a short one, but this one will be, I hope. For several years, while I flew with the Flying Circus, the shows ticked on like clockwork. The crowds were not large, but greatly appreciative and our shows were wonderful. And then, one black year, we had one incident after another. Ron David and, and uh, oh, Bill Patchett actually came to blows during the final formation. Unfortunately, they were not in the same airplane at the time. Also during that year, we parked a fleet in top of a tree. I broke a tail wheel and attempted to taxi with it, <laughs> unaware. <laughs> so at the end of that season, Jerry Ryder and I put together an awards dinner. It was the first and last annual, <laughs> with many annuals to follow. Uh, meeting of the Beagles, which was the Bum Engine and Gear Up Landing Society. <laughs> and that infamous year, 
we had a special award for every single pilot at the Flying Circus Aerodrome because almost every single pilot was involved in an incident. And the prizes were according. Everybody had a great time. But there was one pilot that did, although he received a prize, it didn't have anything to do with his accident because he didn't have one. That was Charlie. But the prize that he did receive was extremely appropriate. It was tongue in cheek at the time and got a big laugh. But the prize was probably the most appropriate all because it was a confessional booth. You see, Charlie, throughout his history here at the Flying Circus, has not only managed the affairs of the Flying Circus, but he has also managed the affairs of the hearts of its members. And in spite of his problems, he always had time to straighten out the problems that the rest of us had. Thank you, Charlie, for everything you always have been for what you are now and what your memory forever will be. Thank you very much, Bill. There used to be a story around the circus for years and years and years. It was, how, how did anybody know that uh, Bill Hull uh, tore the tail wheel off his uh, airplane? Took full power to taxi. <laughs> People have already left, but I'm going to tell you that this has been the greatest day in my life. Nice to see you. Y'all got to know that. I mean, you know, it, it really has. And I will take this with me, you know. Hey, I'm not going anywhere. I'll take this with me. <laughs> There's always been flying farmers. There's always been a, a comedy guy in, in aviation, even before World War II. And uh, they generally were either a farmer or a drunk or an escape convict or a professor who was going to read and teach himself to fly. That was the categories. And uh, of all of them, I like the farmer because this show appeals to kids and I didn't want to be a drunk in front of the kids. And, uh, but uh, uh, I, I, and I had known people that did this act before. Uh, and and uh, it, it just appealed to me, always has. And my first show, I was booked to do a show back in 1948. And, uh, and I got married. I came home when I was working in North Carolina and I was booked for a show down there and, and, and then I never went back to it because you end up with family and everything else. And I spent my whole life uh, teaching flying and I'm a licensed mechanic and I was a mechanic and flight instructor. And then finally, uh, 37 years ago, they started the Flying Circus and in about two years after they started, I got a a shot at uh, doing a comedy act, and I've been doing it ever since. <laughs> I tell everybody, my students taught me everything I know. <laughs> they would do something dumb with me, then I, you know, I would go up later in the evening, and I would say, well, wonder if I waited a little longer to take over, you know, and I would just push it by myself a little further. Uh, you know, because a good instructor, you can't teach anybody if you're hanging on to the controls. And I used to be honest about it, and I'd go up afterwards and I'd say, 
could I wait a little bit longer? And and uh, and then so I I got to learning how to fly the airplane to extremes, and uh, that's all I do is just fly the airplane to extremes. Not extremes where it will hurt the airplane, because my speed is is way down below hurting it. The little Cub is a rare airplane. If you do something with it, it'll say, don't do that. But it talks to you. It, it's got its own language, and I learn its language, and uh, you, you can feel stuff coming on. It's not impossible because I do it, but you know what I mean. The, the, the hardest thing about the act that I do is the wind conditions. See, that's stuff that you can't see, and you just got to have a, a gut feeling about, you know, what what that's going to be. But uh, that that's the hard part. I've only used four other airplanes besides mine, one time each. And uh, I fly that little airplane so close that when I get into another airplane, the same model, it almost feels like it's a different airplane to me because, um, you know, if, a, if the throttle's a little more stiffer than mine or, you know, the least little thing, you can tell the difference. And I, I use two planes, two different Cubs in England. I use one plane in Edmundsburg, Pennsylvania, and I use one Cub back at my own field. So anyway, I've had over 800 sorties with this little yellow airplane, and I know it. I lived about a mile up the road, and uh, an old fella here had been a farmer for years, and I needed a, an outfit, and I got to thinking, I said, well, old Silas ought to have a pair of overalls down there, so I came down here and borrowed his overalls 35 years ago and never returned them. Virginia, do you remember when I borrowed these overalls from yeah. your father? It was on a Sunday morning. And his granddaddy? Got okay. mom out of bed to look for them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and she kept bringing me real nice overalls. I wanted something rough. Yeah. And it took me a while and finally this was about the third <laughs> pair she brought me and I said, that's just exactly right. And she thought I was some kind of a nut. Uh, old Silas, I used to come down here, he was a fine old man, and uh, I'd walk in, he'd have his corn cob pipe in his mouth, and he'd say, Mr. Cup, if you've got just a minute, I want to tell you a joke. And then he would go on from there. You know. Wonderful man, my kids loved him, my kids were small. And we were, this was country, and we would let them walk down the road down here to go to the store and, and buy something. But uh, you couldn't do that now. Now you've got a car coming along. You see every minute. You know, times have changed. But we're 15 miles out of Fredericksburg, and there used to be one stoplight between here and town. And now the, I last my last count there was 17. <laughs>